Hi, Larry. How are you today? Hey, Mike. Really good. Nice to see you. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, I found it really interesting that your character, Steve, uh, who is, of course, based off a real person, was seemingly the only guy who kind of got to splurge a little once the fun started <laughs> to come in. So I was going to ask you, when you started to become successful in this business, I guess maybe arguably back with the Bernie Mac show, um, <laughs> what was your first big splurge? Okay, now before I answer that, I don't know if Steve is technically based on a real person. I'm sure there was somebody handling the money, but I don't think this character was. So just clearing that up for any legal reasons, you know. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I had one big splurge. I was, by the time I did the Bernie Mac show, I was married and had a couple of kids, so for me, we're buying a house, you know, that was the thing that I was thinking of. So it wasn't a thing for me personally, you know, I think it was more of a, of a, of a thing for the future, that type of thing. Smart. Good. Yeah. Well, that actually that kind of addresses, ironically, I was going to ask you the responsible side of that yes. is if you made the same amount of money as Jerry and Marge allegedly Ooh. did, yeah. um, how would you give back to the community or how would you use it? Well, I would immediately start my research on monkeypox. I would do that immediately. Um, I don't like this monkeypox. I don't like what it's doing to us. It's scaring us when we thought we were done with COVID. I'm pushing it all into the middle of the table for monkeypox. That's what I'm doing. Great answer. That was a really unexpected too. That's a fantastic hey, answer. Hey man, I'm not. I'm not backing down from this monkeypox. Sorry, <laughs> monkeypox. No, don't <laughs> apologize to monkeypox. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Yes, um, you're right, Mike. I will not apologize to Monkey Pox. You're right about that. <laughs> well, on that note, you're obviously a very political, uh, politically minded individual with, you know, the comedic writing and the shows that you've hosted. Sure. Um, and I love the fact that this story is based off a true story. And like you said, Steve may sure. or may not be a real person. If you, being the prolific writer that you are, had to choose a recent mm -hmm. news story to turn into a film, what would you choose? Wow, what a great question question a recent news story i mean there's so much so many sad things that have happened in the news it's really tough as my brain searches to try to find something uplifting it's really tough but i tell you what i would try to do i think i'd try to tell a story of some of these people who are making a difference in ukraine right now uh, especially some of the young people who are, who are choosing to stay and fight and that type of stuff. I think there's a lot of great stories that are happening on the ground there that are really interesting. I mean, it's a whole different culture that I'm not that familiar with. So it'd be in education as well, which would be interesting. But I think I'd look to something like that for some uh, storytelling that's going to stretch me and move me and take me to a different place, you know. On that note, once again, because of kind of the breadth of experience you've had in terms mm -hmm. of sitcoms and, you know, political comedy, is there a type of writing or a type of comedy that you feel there's a story within you that you still haven't had a chance to address yet? Oh, absolutely. I mean, most of that is stories about my family. I haven't, I haven't really tapped into, you know, as much as I think that I can. But what I try to do is I try to use elements of that in other stories that I'm telling. I've always been more shy about my own life, you know, and so I try to hide it in these other things, I guess you say hide it. But I think that's an area that I haven't explored as much as I probably like to, but I will be doing that in more ways, I think, with the things that I'm doing. I'm also gonna be doing more, uh, I'll just say romantic comedies, you know, something I'm interested in that I haven't really done much. And so my brain is starting to think of some stories like that. And so I have some ideas for things that I wanna, I want to put out there. Yeah. You had a very recent podcast, uh, your podcast, I should say, with Judd Apatow, and you were asking him, what does he consider to be the characteristics of comedians that would be in the upper echelon? Mm -hmm. So again, I wanted to ask you that same question. Ooh, look at you turning around my own question. <laughs> uh, what are the characteristics of comedian, right? So this is an interesting question because you can answer it in a lot of different ways, but I will answer it in the way that um, I think it was Stan Laurel who answered like this, you know, number one, and I'll say this, this helps, let's put it like that, as opposed to it has to be, uh, that they sound funny. So the way that they sound, even when they're, when they're just talking, whatever, there's something about them that sounds funny. Okay. Like Groucho, Groucho sounded funny all the time. He sounded like that. <laughs> Uh, most of your, your best comedians just sound funny, you know. Uh, number two, they're saying something funny all the time. There's something that they're saying, the thing that they're saying is funny, you know, uh, making jokes, whatever. And the last one is, is they look funny, <laughs> you know. <laughs> when you look at them, you're just ready to laugh, whether it's 
knowing what they're thinking, you know, that they're saying something, their outrageousness, a look that they have. Those are the three things. When those are put together, your classic comics have those three qualities, you know. Love it. I think I have two out of three, so I think I'm almost there. Hey, so. man, there you go. You're on your <laughs> way. You're on your way. <laughs> I am, I am. Larry, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck with the film. My pleasure. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Real Students, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also, click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter, and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there, and you can become part of my Patreon team.